so much, Shay. Well, tonight, a disabled Knoxville man finding himself deep in debt and wondering why he ever believed he had won money. Yeah, all it takes are a few key taps on a computer, and scammers can ruin the lives of so many unsuspecting victims. Well, WATE 6 on your side, consumer reporter Don Dare says, for five months, scammers mm. never let up, no. the victim believing that money was on its way. And we haven't seen a financial loss like this in years. Wow. The scammers who hoodwinked a Knoxville man are much richer tonight. The ruse they used is an old one. The methods, however, are new. With personal information widely available on social media and with many willing to share it, all scammers have to do is clone a fake message, either through Facebook or Messenger, and if they get a bite from an unsuspecting victim, they never give up. In South Knoxville, Michael is getting ready to move to a smaller apartment. He's broke and deep in debt. Embarrassed about his loss, Michael asked that we not use his last name. Not long after he was burned in an accidental house fire last May, he fell for a scam. Michael's recovery from the burns took months. After the accident, you know, it was just really rough. I got laid off my job. Michael said he had some savings, but not much. Debbie is a high school friend. She was in my brother's class. While recuperating, Michael says Debbie, an old friend, sent a text saying due to his disability, he was eligible for money. What does she tell you in these texts, basically? That she had received a $150,000 check and that my name was on the list, too. So you thought, okay, yeah, let's do it. Because I trusted Debbie, because like I said, we grew up together. She said I would have to put some money towards it. So you start doing that? Yes. His name is Brandon Smith, and he's in Lagos, Nigeria. Brandon Smith is the person Debbie had Michael reach out to. Michael was to pay some advance fees to receive his cash reward. What were you supposed to do to get the money? Send them gift cards. And it looks like you have quite a few gift cards there. I do. I have probably about seven or eight thousand, maybe even ten thousand dollars worth of gift cards. How much? Close to maybe ten thousand dollars. Once the scammer had Michael hooked, he wanted more from him. Here are receipts for iPhones that Michael was ordered to send to Nigeria. He didn't ask why. These are the Apple bags for the phones that I had to get, and each bag contained about six to seven phones each time. What was the process after that? First time they said it was on the way. And, um, but that the UPS guys got into a terrible accident. He was told that the UPS facility in North Knoxville is where the 150000 would be sent, but more fees were needed to pick it up. And the scammers were shifting. Michael's Discover card so was targeted was next. Card. And it maxed out my credit card so much that I put $32,000 on my Discover card. Since the loss, he's changed his account number. They managed to get into my bank account. He showed us account information from his bank, where thousands of dollars were withdrawn. What's the total amount of money you think you've lost? Um, well, probably close to about $50,000. He actually gave me tracking numbers for delivery of the check. At one point, Michael questioned Brandon Smith. Smith sent this reply. I'm not cheating you. Don't think of me as a bad person. By this time, Michael's savings were gone. He admits he was naive. I think I'm an idiot. I know. I'm, I'm an idiot. I, I just had hope. I don't know. You had hope, you said. Yeah. You had hope that this was real? Yeah. The national publication Consumer Reports released an article last year, Why Some People Are Vulnerable to Scams. Facing a rough patch is one of the reasons. It fits right in with Michael's circumstances. Loss of a job, recovering from his injuries, mounting medical bills. A Federal Trade Commission report found that your odds of being scammed more than double when you experience some sort of life trauma. That a person's cognitive capacity to spot scams diminishes, according to the report. Michael realizes now his friend Debbie never sent him that initial message. It came directly from the scammers. Even if it's a friend that texts you saying that you want something, don't believe it's true because once you start sending stuff like this, it es escalates and it just ripped me off. Now, Michael believed that $150,000 check would be delivered by UPS. The worldwide delivery company is aware that fraudulent communications by third parties using the UPS brand is prevalent. On its website, UPS provides a warning that unscrupulous third parties will claim a package is waiting 
to be delivered at a nearby facility. Then an advance payment to receive the package may be required. UPS says before paying anyone in advance, verify the local phone number and call it, making sure it is the real UPS facility. And Bo and Kristen, Michael wishes he had known of that warning before he sent these guys so much money wow. over to Nigeria. Yeah, there's That's a lot of others out there too that I wish they had known. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, heartbreaking, yes. Don. Yeah. Hopefully somebody will learn from this though, others Hope watching so. tonight. All right, Don, thank you. If you have a consumer question for Don, send him an email at ddare at wat.com. You can also call us six on your side hotline number. It's 865-633-5974.